What's up, guys? We are live. We're actually two minutes early. Uh, I am, you know, I always say this. I'm pumped about the show, but let me tell you why I'm excited for this show. I've had multiple people come uh, call me, text me over the last few months and said, you have to meet this young lady. You have to meet this girl. You have to hear this story. You got to get her on your show. So I said... You know, I said, listen, I got now I got to know. Now I got to meet her. So what, about a month ago, I came up to your school, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, met your teacher, met, right. the, met the director of the school, mm -hmm. met you. Yeah. And I said, do not tell me your story because <laughs> I want to keep it real, raw, and live. <laughs> Even though I was dying to hear this story, I, I didn't want to hear anything because we keep this so authentic, so real, right? right. There's nothing scripted. I'm just going to ask you questions as they come right. to me. But that being said, so I want you to introduce yourself, okay. and uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to take them behind that black curtain a little bit and give that value, and I'm going to pull those gold nuggets out. You ready? Yes. That a girl. <laughs> that a girl. Okay. So Aaliyah. Okay. Well, I'm Aaliyah Dabner Moore. Um, I was born in Oceanside, raised in Escondido, moved up to Hemet about a year ago. I'm 17 and attend Aspire Community Day School. So awesome, that's awesome. So me. <laughs> your middle name is Diamond. Yes. Love it. Love it. <laughs> I know I love it too. <laughs> love it. You might have to switch your first name. You might have to switch those names. Girl. <laughs> Diamond a little right? more. <laughs> right? There you go. Love it. I love it. So um you're seventeen. Yes. And you're in what's the name of the school? Aspire Community Aspire. Day School. Okay. What type of school is that? That is a school for um expelled kids. Okay. So like uh, me. <laughs> it's either expelled kids or voluntary kids that like um their grades slip and they go to that oh, school. Yeah. Oh, and then they mm -hmm. go and they get their credits. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, I know it's structured different because right. I spent some time up there. Right. And mm -hmm. I know I'll be speaking up there too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know it's definitely structured different. Yes. Mm -hmm. What I the little bit that I know, it's structured a lot for um real life. Right. Real mm -hmm. world. It Not, is. Right. Mm -hmm. So have you been there a year? Um. Yeah. I. I I think I've been there since last. I got there last October. You did? Yeah. Okay. So in 2015. So a little over a year. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, how do you like it? I like it a lot. You do? Actually, um, I got my expulsion lifted and I decided to stay there. So I'm there voluntarily now. Oh, so you yeah. could go back? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, just so you know, my little bit of my backstory mm -hmm. probably make you a little more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Left back in the second grade, right. diagnosed with ADD, mm -hmm. said I had a learning disorder, right. never graduated high school, mm -hmm. and at 19, I'm sitting in the jail cell looking at 8 to 10 mm -hmm. and things don't go my way. Right. So, you know, um, one thing I'm very, very grateful for is that the start isn't nearly as important as the finish. Mm -hmm. So, because um, I'd be in trouble, I had a rough paper. <laughs> right. <out. laughs> right. um, and I know... Um, I, I, I sounds like you did too. Mm -hmm. So uh, would love to hear, you know, your story because right. what we do here, right? It's it's really about bringing that value. And mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, um, and I can tell by your energy, you're going to get this. Stop running from your story. Mm -hmm. Your story is who you are. Right. right? Embrace those scars. Yeah. And now it's your obligation to share that because you don't know who you're going to be able to connect with. Exactly. You don't know who you're going to be able mm -hmm. to touch. So. Um, Let's do this, girl. Let's do this. Okay. So, born and mm -hmm. raised in Oceanside. In Escondido. Oh, Escondido. Yeah. Born in Oceanside, yeah. Born in Oceanside, mm -hmm. but raised in Escondido. Yes. And then uh, found yourself up in Hemet because you got expelled. Well, I was at, I actually got expelled out here. Oh, you did? So, yeah. Okay. So, I moved to Hemet, then got expelled. Oh, then yeah. you moved to Hemet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how was your um, childhood? I mean, you're still only the 17, but you know right. what I mean. Well, when I was young, I was actually, I was bright. Like, I'm still like outgoing I was always outgoing but it was just like when I got older you know I I was angry and I didn't know why I was angry I just had like an anger to me yeah and I would always seem to need to want to fight really right and so where do you think that came from I think that um I saw a lot of it come from my mother okay because she that's how she um shows her love is what kind of like being angry but it's not really angry like, like she like, like rage right but like she would yell but it's not a bit like it was just that's how she showed how to love us mm -hmm. and so that's where I, I guess that's where I got it from because I'm just like my mother okay. like exactly <laughs> like my mother and so I would that's that's kind of where I was like okay well I'm gonna be angry and I'm gonna be mad because that's what you learned exactly that was your condition yeah and so that's how I, I just learned how to be like that 
And so nothing was wrong with it, like, to me. Mm-hmm. It was so, normal. Yeah, it was normal yeah. to me. And that, that's just how I was. And then... Now, do you have brothers and sisters? I have a lot of brothers and sisters. There's about 11 of them. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, did you live with them? or? Um, I lived with, um, I think, five of them. Okay. Yeah. And where do you fit age-wise with them? I was in the middle. Okay. So I had, um, I think, two older sisters mm-hmm. and then two younger... No, three... Wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah. No, I was actually... Uh, I had three older siblings and one older brother that I lived with. That you lived with? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you were in the middle, mm-hmm. right? So you had the younger ones you had to kind of watch out for, mm-hmm. and then the other ones, you right. know, they kind of did their thing, I would right. imagine. Yeah, right? it was, yeah, it was most, mostly like that. Everyone did their thing? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was, a, it was a, mm-hmm. kind of a free-for-all. Yeah, and it was kind of where I was like, well, because my sister, that I mean, my sister and my brother, they were in high school, mm-hmm. and then my little brother was far, like, he... He's he was like, way younger. Yeah, and so it was just me, kind of. Mm. And I had a cousin, but it was just like once she moved on to high school, and I was in middle school. You were almost like an only child, right? In a way, so it was just right? like kind of me. Yeah. I mean, they were at home, but, but it was just no. Like, I know, I yeah. know, because I was the same way. Mm-hmm. I was uh, my brother was ten years older than me. My sister was five years, so I was almost like I was the youngest, but I was the, it's like the young. You're still like the only child in a way. Right. You're just a disconnect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And were you close with your mom? Um, we, we've gotten closer now. Do you like, tolerated one another? <laughs> yeah, that's how it was in the house. Because I was like, I'm stubborn. Yeah. Well, you're, you you so, said you're a lot like her, so that's going to... Yeah, and so right? I'm very stubborn, and I'm like, well, you can tell me what to do, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> right. Like, that's how I was when yeah. I was younger. So right. it was just like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you could tell um, just by the way you speak and, mm-hmm. and you look people in the eye. Right. You, um, you have an inner confidence mm-hmm. that's really it's a, it's a great thing at your age right mm-hmm. um don't ever lose that right. no because no i can tell but i can just tell by the way you mm-hmm. carry yourself um there's a lot there's a lot there mm-hmm. and, and it's just going to unfold in such a great way mm-hmm. instead of being the other way mm-hmm. you know instead of being um you know a girl that you know at 17 that can't look in the eye and, right. and mm-hmm. is unsure right i get the i get the exact opposite from you so mm-hmm. awesome stuff awesome <laughs> stuff i love it uh because it's usually the other way around right. so growing up was it hard was it did you struggle what? um well i would say that i struggled with um because i was sensitive i right. was really sensitive when i was younger and so a lot of things um people would come at me sometimes, Mm -hmm. especially in Escondido where I was like sometimes the only black girl in my Mm -hmm. class. So Mm -hmm. people wouldn't understand the way I lived or the things I did. So I got made fun of a lot. And so I would take that. First, it wasn't all anger. First, I would would cry a lot. It was like I was a crybaby and that was that. And then I started, I decided that I didn't want to be like that anymore. Mm -hmm. But it I didn't. Where, when did that start to change? I would say in the middle of middle school, so about thirteen. You were starting 14. to mature, right? right? And yeah. you were saying, "Wait a minute, mm-hmm. this isn't this isn't going right. to go down like this." Exactly. So you take that the 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 victim, right? And you turn that around into mm-hmm. the rage, right? Right into the anger, exactly. Right, and then mm-hmm. okay, and okay. I thought that would like fix everything, yeah. So I was just like, "All right." Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but but you know what? You're 13 years old, exactly. right? You're growing up in a household mm-hmm. that, that there's a lot of anger anyway, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, am I going to keep being a victim, right, mm-hmm. in your mind, or right. am I going to am I going to defend myself? Exactly. And and then it gets to a point where you're probably <laughs> looking for a fight, right? Right. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I know. Like every I know. Day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just it just it becomes its mm-hmm. own animal. And that's because like when I fought, it's like. I don't get in trouble for fighting, or I didn't used to get in trouble. At home. It'd be like, oh, right. well, did you beat her up? Right, right. Okay, good. Right. Right? And so, when you fight, you get respect. Mm-hmm. And so, that's why I fought, because I got respect for it. Right, so instead it of being picked good. on. Right, yeah. yeah. So It kind of built your mm-hmm. self-image, exactly. right? Just not realizing back then, right. right, that it was in a negative way. Exactly. Right? In a negative yeah. way. So, but, look, at the end of the day, yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> right. Right? Mm-hmm. Um. And you had the strength to actually step up and do that. Mm-hmm. And not everyone can do that, right? right? Um, so that's another good thing, mm-hmm. believe it or not. Um, how were your grades in school? My grades, I always had good grades. Did you? Yeah, good. until um, I would say my sophomore year okay. back in Escondido. Mm-hmm. I started kind of slipping, mm-hmm. but I managed to get them, get them back up. My what grade. happened? The wrong crowd? 
<laughs> not the wrong crowd because I still hang out with the people I do okay. today. Right. But I would say I lost myself in the beginning of um, high school year. Yeah. I lost okay. myself. You did mm-hmm. okay because I was so I, I was so weak minded that I thought that okay because of I'm hanging out with these people and they like that type of girl and that type of girl that type of girl I'm going to be that type of girl. Oh. I let their ideas of what they like influence me and so change who you right, were. Right, exactly. And so I was I was extremely weak minded. And for I how long? That, um I'd say my junior year. Just a year. Yeah. Awesome. Well, no, my freshman and junior okay. and sophomore year and then I changed. So about two and a half years. Right. You mm-hmm. you you were actually trying to become somebody you weren't. Right, exactly. Right? And it and was yeah. It was a lot of it. And it was just like, okay, well, I was confused, like very I was confused in who I was. Yep. And I yep. think now the the best thing you can do is find out who you are. Love that self awareness, right? Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And what I love, me personally about this is you're able to identify it so early, mm-hmm. so young, mm-hmm. that, um, man, that's so rare. <laughs> no, it is. That, that's awesome. That right. is awesome. Mm-hmm. I love that. Because, uh, at, at, you know, listen, uh, how old are you in the freshman? What, 14, 15? Yeah. Something like that? Mm-hmm. Nobody. No, there's no kid that knows, even knows what level of awareness even right. is, right? Mm-hmm. And even, even in high school, mm-hmm. to be able to get out of that, where was that change? Where did that change happen um, coming into your what, remember, junior year? Yeah, no, I remember actually sophomore year of summer. Okay. I was, I stopped talking to my friends and I, I just... I just spent a lot of time with myself. Like, I even mm. stopped talking to my best friend. Well, I talked to her, but I didn't spend that much time. But with you her. were separated. Right, yeah. Why? Because I found out, like, I thought if I needed to find myself, I need to be with myself. I need to find, I need to stop, like, if I need attention, I need to stop hanging out with my friends. I need to give myself attention. Okay, but right. here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to know, right? Mm-hmm. Me too. Mm-hmm. How? What? Where? Where did that start to change for you? Mm-hmm. Like, where did you feel yourself getting lost? Like, how did you identify it? That's what I'm asking. Oh, wow. I mean, because that's, that's big. Right. At would, that age. Mm, I would say that I started identifying everything actually this year. But it was just like... But you knew something? And something you knew was enough wrong. I knew something was to wrong. To start to separate right. mm-hmm. from the crowd. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't. I would go back a lot. Like, I, I write a lot, so I go back. And oh. I go back to the past. And I remember, okay, well... That's what was wrong with me. So you journal. Right, yeah, a lot. (laughs) Let's talk about that. How does that how does that help you? Because I know a lot of people that have that's almost like their therapy, Mm -hmm. right? And for me, I don't I don't enjoy writing, but I love moving like motion therapy. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the gym or I'm in my Mm -hmm. truck and I'm and and that helps me clear Mm -hmm. my head. What does writing do for you? It helps me because you can when you write and you you may, might be mad over petty stuff or mm-hmm. you might be sad over stuff that you shouldn't be sad about. And so I write it and then I reread it and mm. sometimes it's little. Yeah. Like it's just it puts little when you perspective. Re-read. Yeah, it's a different And I bet you, I bet you, mm-hmm. how long have you been doing that? Since the, my freshman year. Okay. Mm-hmm. I bet you that had so much to do. Could mm-hmm. you, would you reread them a lot? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that had probably had so much to do mm-hmm. with you being able to understand who yeah, you are right. or mm-hmm. who you weren't. Exactly. More importantly, mm-hmm. because you could you journal. Right. I mean, that's that's a, where did you pick that up at? By yourself? Yeah. I just was like, okay, well, I just, I don't know. Man, <laughs> I was man. like, I'm feeling some type of way. I have nobody to tell. So guess what? I'm going to so, write. So you start to write. Mm-hmm. And then you would read it. And then it would it would, you would it would be like a blueprint for you. Right, yeah. It'd be like, okay, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. That's where that probably it had to come from there. Right. I love that. So once you started to, to spend time with yourself, what happened? How did that change? I um I like started to think like, okay, well, the things I'm doing is not me. I should I should be myself no matter what somebody mm-hmm. thinks of me. Mm-hmm. Like if you guys are like my, it or not. Right, if you guys are my true friends, you guys would love me for me. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have to put up a front or act the way like act the way you would like somebody to act yep. for you to like yep. And so I just started, I started being me. And that, that helped a lot. And then yeah. once you started to do that, how did that freedom feel? Because I know the answer. Cause, cause, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt good because I wasn't hiding behind mm-hmm. a mask anymore. It's like a freedom. Right. And it felt like, well, this is me. Did, it, did you feel like it helped your confidence, your self-image? Yeah, definitely that. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I was like, in freshman year, I was like, I was really not confident at all. Quiet, yeah, I was, reserved. Well, 
actually around friends. I was actually, you know, like hyped up, you know. Yeah, yeah. But by myself, when I lost friends, because I was like alone for my freshman year mm-hmm. at the end, mm-hmm. I was like very quiet. And okay. I was just like, okay. So how'd you lose the friends? Um, I don't know. You just, just kind of separated? Yeah. Yeah. That one was just like, okay, well, nobody, I... I don't know. It's well, like, well, here's the thing, though, right? Mm-hmm. Is is there is an answer to that? Mm-hmm. Is because you weren't yourself, mm-hmm. there it wasn't a true connection, right? So eventually, you are gonna, you know, mm-hmm. go your separate ways because there's not they right. they don't even know who you are, right? Exactly. Because you didn't know who you mm-hmm. were. Uh, but the journaling, man, that got you there. I mm-hmm. love that. Yeah, I love that mm-hmm. so early on. Um, so did you play sports? What did you like to do in school? Um, I cheered a lot, and that oh, actually helped good. too. I'm not cheering now, which I wish I was, but in college I will. Okay. So yeah, when I cheered, it was like. What do you like about it? I, I love cheer. You I have like a huge passion for cheer. Why? It's What's like, it? What do you feel? I guess most mostly I love performing. Yes. So okay. when I like when I perform or when I was with my cheer squad and we would go. Um, before we perform, we'd always like go over our routines. So you like dance. Um, or do you like cheer? Yeah, just cheer. Yeah. Okay. And so we'd get mad at each other because we weren't hitting it right. Okay. And so it was just like okay. And then I remember one of my um, oldest cheerleaders, Larissa. She'd always tell us, just bring it out on the stage, and that's what we would do. And so all that anger, we would just. And um, I mean, not even all that anger just that day. I mean, all of the anger. Yes. We would and just, passion. Right. Yeah. We would just put it in the routine and we'll hit everything. So that was your therapy, mm-hmm. right? And being out there on stage right. mm-hmm. just fed you. Right. Yeah. I right. love the stage. I don't know why. Like, That's good. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, how long have you cheered? Did you I cheer? I cheered for third grade and then I think I stopped in middle school and then I continued. Why? Wow, you started that young? So, yeah. And then I continued in um, my. High school year, and then I yeah. stopped okay. when I was a sophomore. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now, um, is there anything anything major that's happened in your life that's really a game changer for you? That's that's the any type of like major struggle that you had to get through. Um, I think that what was hard for me getting through because when I was younger, I was a daddy girl, okay. and he was really my dad was in and out of jail for me, okay. and so that was I I guess that was hard. Okay. But I don't. Like, are you still is he still around? Yeah, he, he, yeah, so I live with him. This, oh, yeah, good, 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 good. Okay. And so I was like, well, when I was younger, I, I always would be like, well, where is he? You know. Mm-hmm. And then my mom, she kind of sometimes she would tell us, but sometimes she wouldn't. Okay. And so that was kind of hard for me to. Because it's probably hard for her to explain. Right. Yeah. He might be in jail mm-hmm. right now. He's getting out. Right. right. So right. that one was hard, but it was. How is it now back it, with him? It's good. Is yeah. It? Yeah. And especially because like. Um, he, seeing him take because he has a son, seeing him taking care of his son and just being married, being settled down, yeah, is like, up. Yeah, yeah, it's like really good for me to see. Like, right. I like that a so lot, awesome. yeah, because yeah, it's a respect, like, mm-hmm. it's it's like this is my dad, yeah, right? How mm-hmm. old is his son? Um, I think he's two, good, mm-hmm. good, so he's he's doing the right thing, right? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. So it feels good for you. Yeah. Right? Because that's your dad. <laughs> right. Um, now, are you still close with your mom? Or? Um, yeah. I would actually was just out there with her. Yeah? Yeah. Good, good, so, good, good. Yeah. Awesome. And you guys are getting along better? Mm-hmm. All right. So, <laughs> um, so with this new school, you've been there a little over a year, mm-hmm. right? Um, phenomenal school from what I know. Right. Um, how has that helped you? I think that... Um, well, when I first got there, I had to see a, um, a anger management. Right. And I was like, well, I don't have, I would always tell myself, I don't have mm-hmm. anger, I don't have anger issues. Right. People right. need to stop messing with me. That's what <laughs> I would tell girl. them because I don't. Right. And right, so right, right. I guess she, that's why I identify, that's one reason why I identify things better because she taught me how. She she kind of took you behind right. your own black curtain, mm-hmm. right? right? And said, okay, Aaliyah, here's mm-hmm. why. We exactly. feel you have this. Right. Now we can work on it, right? Because right. if you don't mm-hmm. know it's broke, yeah, you, you can't, can't fix, fix it. it. Exactly. So what are some of the what are some of the things that 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 she taught you? Like what are some of the things that you said? Okay, maybe I do mm-hmm. need to work on that. One thing she taught me was that I can't fix everything because right. I'm that type of girl. So that, you're a control girl, right? Right. If I see you, I'd be like, okay, and I'll become friends with you. But I will, I will like find that issue in you, and mm-hmm. I'll try. Like I'll be like, okay, well, this is what we're gonna do. Right, <laughs> we're right. gonna, we're, you're gonna make it. Like I'll right. tell people, you're gonna make it because they are. Mm-hmm. But some people w- won't believe me, mm-hmm. and they just, you know, do them. Mm-hmm. And I, she taught me that I can't, you know, it's take. Not, it's not your job. Exactly. Right. 
Yeah. Right. And that and do you feel like that took some pressure off of you? It did because yeah. I was stressed. Yes. And that's uh, that's kind of one thing I struggle with still today, okay. but not so much. Right. But yeah, I was very stressed because I was always worried about somebody else. Yeah, I get but that. But in a positive way. Right. But you mm-hmm. still wanted to. You're like. Well, why? How come you're not doing that? Exactly. Right. Like, right. Yeah. You want to shake them. Yeah. Right. Because you, mm-hmm. but you want the best for them. Exactly. Right. Okay. So that's a lot of stress mm-hmm. to carry mm-hmm. for, a, especially for a young girl, right? right? Mm-hmm. To, for all that. But the other, but the best part of that, mm-hmm. that shows what a great heart you have, mm-hmm. right? What a great mm-hmm. intention. Yeah. And see, I people, um, you know, I don't know if you follow me on, on social media or not, but but. You know, a lot of people connect with me because um, I feel that people are starving for the real. Right? Mm-hmm. And I tell people, I right. live my life. First, let me back up a second. I talk about fear barriers a lot. And I believe that, you know, you could be afraid of the darkness. You could right. be afraid of mm-hmm. um, success. You could be afraid of failure. You mm-hmm. could be, we can sit here and name a thousand fears, but I right. believe they map the two major ones. Mm-hmm. The fear of change mm-hmm. and the fear of what other people think. Right. And... The way you beat that fear of what other people think is, and this is how it's what I do, mm-hmm. is I live with intention. Right. So what I tell people is mm-hmm. I'm not always G-rated right? Right. because mm-hmm. that's not me. And mm-hmm. to me, that's not the real world. Exactly. So if I use a word or a sentence that offends you, mm-hmm. but my intention is pure, mm-hmm. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Right? That's your, you got to figure out why right. that word offends you. So um, I, I love that you're... That, that that was one of the things that she was able to show you. Mm-hmm. Anything else that was a big aha moment? Um, that I would always... She showed me that I did have anger issues. I'm not really anger, but I snapped fast. Yeah, yeah. Little things made mm-hmm. me mad. And right. they're like, I didn't, like, I didn't get that, you know, because... Mm-hmm. I, like I said, I was stubborn, so I was like, well, she needs to stop messing with me. That's that. So <laughs> it's it was, on her. Right. It was right. all. So, how did you, really, how do you, how do you work through that? Would you, what are some of the things? Like, it's probably still right. a work in progress. I, I stopped caring about that. Like, okay. not people, but I stopped caring. Like, like what you said, what people thought about me or what people said about right. me. Right. You stopped being, right. being so defensive. Exactly. Right. And mm-hmm. you just let it flow. Right. And so, here's what I want to make sure we highlight, right? Mm-hmm. Here's the greatest part mm-hmm. about what she just said is she's she learning how to live her life more in a courageous way versus a fearful way because Mm -hmm. when and and i'm guilty of it right Mm -hmm. and i was really guilty of it we're we have a lot in common i was really guilty of that younger as well Mm -hmm. where you you're so worried about what other people think you get so defensive means fear it's a Mm fear-based mentality when you can let that go Mm -hmm. it's more of a courageous mentality Mm -hmm. and then at the, at the same time, right. it's such a relief. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. It's such a relief. So that's another thing that you learned? Right, okay. yeah. Okay. And mm-hmm. anything else? Um, not, yeah, that's it. Just how to... Now, what does she teach you to deal with that, like on a, on a daily? I tell her, well, I continue to write, mm-hmm. and she tells me that just breathe. She teaches yeah. me how to breathe. Right, yeah. <laughs> In and out, and she, right. yeah. 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 But, yeah, that's most likely how I deal with that's it. That's it. Now, have you mm-hmm. seen changes? A lot. Yeah? A lot. Especially since the first time I left there. I love a lot. That. I love that. I love that. Um, and I, I just, I really like your uh, your strong personality mm-hmm. because there's so much that you're going to be able to do. And I know you hear it all the time. And this, <laughs> but, but, but really, um, I just go with my, my gut feeling, my inner right. GPS. Mm-hmm. And even the first time we met, right. you didn't speak a lot, mm-hmm. right? But there's people out there that don't need to speak a lot, but they create a great, strong presence. So way to go, girl. <laughs> Thank love you. It. I love it. Okay. Um, so now you're, uh, how much longer do you have? Is this your last year in this yeah, school? Yeah, this is my last year. Now what? I um, actually got accepted to Savannah State University and to Tuskegee in Georgia? University. Yeah. Wow. So I'm excited. For how that. cool is that? Yeah. Right? I love that. <laughs> so... So let's go back one, one, a few okay. steps real quick. So we'll bring us back around. Right. Okay. So you got expelled. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fighting. Right. 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 How did I know? Right. <laughs> so you got expelled for fighting mm-hmm. and then they placed you in this school. Right. Right. And then you had a certain time to where you had to stay. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And then it got to a point where, like, when did you, when were you able to leave? Um, I actually got my expulsion lifted a couple weeks ago. Oh, so it's not right. been long. 
Yeah. But you want to stay. Since I could have gotten my social lifting like last year, I decided I was going to stay anyway. Oh, you could have? Right. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, so, do you think that this school had a lot to do with you being able to get into that college? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. In what way? I think that, um, I, was, I don't want to like diss any schools, but I Look, it is what it is. <laughs> public schools, you don't have time yeah. at all for your students. Yeah, it's just too and much. You don't see the real colors in your students. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's like 30 students a classroom. And so I I told my dad, like, I no, I told my um, counselor I have now, I said, she asked me, how many times did you see your counselor over there? I said, once. Mm -hmm. all, I was no. there for about like four months. I said, I seen her once. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Once. Actually, twice. Once when I um, started and <laughs> when I got expelled. expelled yeah, exactly. That, that's my, me too. Mm -hmm. The last I saw my counselor when I walked out of school, she said, "Here's my stuff." And exactly. I did the same for me. Right. Um, so, so that definitely had a lot to do, obviously, with with your growth, and you just shared right. that. Um, how how much have you, has it helped you helping others mm -hmm. well, in the last year? I like done a lot of community service like okay. we like as a school together we do a lot of community service and we help we help people and we okay. just most likely we lift up ourselves because we're already like named a bad school and a yep. whole bunch of bad yep. kids and mm -hmm. people just throw us yep. to the side basically yep. and so we just we try to lift each other up because we're not bad mm -hmm. none of them i would say none of them are bad i don't care what you did or what you've right. been through you're not bad Right. You're just misunderstood. Yes. And so And you just you just need mm -hmm. an outlet. You need right. to be to, uh, to be understood. Exactly right. what you mm -hmm. just said. Um how does it feel to give? I love to give. Right. I don't care if it's the littlest <laughs> thing. I love to give. It just makes me happy. Right. Because yeah. I'm not because I remember when I was like young or whatever still and I would be like, Well, I can't have this. Mm -hmm. And I know how it felt for me to not have something. So imagine if you give somebody something and that just makes you feel good right. because you know how it feels right. to not have. And here's why you, right, have such a big obligation to share and mm -hmm. give back. I'll tell you why. Because mm -hmm. what you just said earlier, you know how it feels, mm -hmm. right? So now those that little girl, right. that little <laughs> boy, right, mm -hmm. that's coming out of that neighborhood, mm -hmm. that's going, I'm not supposed to make it, right? Right. That's exactly. that, and for me, when I do my keynote, there's mm -hmm. a, a guy named Tommy mm -hmm. that helped me understand that because I wasn't supposed to make it right. right. Everyone told me because I couldn't learn in a certain way mm -hmm. and I was always in trouble that I wasn't supposed to make it. So mm -hmm. I thought I was just one of once I dropped out of school, I was just a laborer in construction, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. That's I was only supposed to be that physical guy. Mm -hmm. And Tommy showed me that he was from the neighborhood and he showed me that. There is another way mm -hmm. if you're willing to learn, right. grow, and move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so that's such a great thing that now you're going to be gifted with to give back. Mm -hmm. I love right. that. Mm -hmm. I love that. And you are and you have the, the strength to do that. You have the personality. You have the, the DNA mm -hmm. for that. So um, that's perfect. That's perfect. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what happens with you in the next five or ten years. <laughs> I'm right? excited too. So now um, you, you're already accepted. Right. Right mm -hmm. to college. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go next year. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's the plan? Um, I'm gonna study in um, psychology and criminology awesome. to become a forensic psychologist. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm actually really interested in that. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> wow, that is very cool. Before we move on, let's see who jumped on. <laughs> All right, we got Stephanie. Stephanie, thank you so much for jumping on. Uh, Paul, um, thank you, man. Thank you for taking the time. We have um, Aaron Rockman. Aaron, what's up, big man? It's been a minute. Um, let's see here. Brady, big Brady up and we, we're bringing them all. You're bringing them all the way from Alaska, girl. <laughs> all right. Uh, big Paul, I was diagnosed with dyslexic with ADHD put in uh, retarded rooms, uh, rode the small bus at a young age. I knew I was better than the guy next to me uh, drooling on himself. Uh, so I was, I was fucking pissed, so I retired fine. Uh, 55 all good, way to go, man. Don't, you know, you know, what Paul just wrote is he's talking about, and I say this all the time, 
you don't have to accept anybody's label, mm -mm, right? It's completely up mm -hmm. to you whether right. you accept that label or not. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like Paul got to a point where he said, you know what, I'm not willing to accept that mm -hmm. label. And I'm right. not, and, and you can put that on me, but I'm going to take it off. Exactly. So I love that, man. So um, it sounds like that's the case. Uh, Paul, awesome job, man. Uh, Paul, for me, I identify myself after going through all the pain. Uh, God's boot camp. Man, it's so interesting you say that. I call it life's boot camp. <laughs> Puts us through boot camps. And Isaiah Steele, ready? Mm -hmm. So, uh, lives from Oceanside, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. His sister was, him and his sister were on the show. Because mm -hmm. um, his dad, I know his dad for years, his dad used right. to, anyway, long story short. Um, Isaiah and his sister, both uh, are entrepreneurs. Oh. Isaiah has his own uh, fresh juice company. He's, mm -hmm. His goal this year is to hit 200 grand gross oh, wow. sales. And then uh, his sister has a cleaning mm -hmm. company. She has 50 um, accounts mm -hmm. and she has her cousins do the work. Wow. And she has, she, at, at 12 years old. Oh, wow. Uh, it's That's awesome. Amazing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Big Paul, looking good. Image for me almost put me underground, but it didn't. So you're still there. You're still breathing. Colin Porter from England. Bring him from England. Oh, wow. Look at you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, it was all fear. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting thing. A lot of people can't identify. Uh, and again, like we were talking about uh, with you, you know, and, and believe me, same same with me, mm -hmm. is when you're lashing out, you're, 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 you have that all that anger and that right. rage. It really, a lot of it maps to a fear, mm -hmm. right? And and you were able to identify that right. so young, mm -hmm. right? Because you're 17? Mm -hmm. Man, I wasn't even close to you <laughs> at 17. I was still a nightmare. Um, so I'm telling you, that's um, that's awesome. So Latoya? That's my sister. All right. She gave you a big, uh, a, a big heads up. So uh, Latoya, thank you so much for jumping on. So college, you ready? Yeah, Are you excited? I'm very excited. All right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what? So it's going to be four years, mm -hmm. right? And then what? Um, I'm going to go just write it out for now. So okay. I'm just going to go through that and then see what happens. Just mm -hmm. take it, take it step yeah. by step. Mm -hmm. um, and then, are you? You think you're still going to stay connected to the school? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I actually want to go back and speak. Okay. Yeah. Because awesome. they're a big. Um, Part of my change, part of me, yes. and why I'm here today. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. And I love the fact that uh, how did how did that even happen? What happens? Do the schools talk, and then they say um, she got expelled? Well, like, they were like a new school that year. I came; they were okay. new, and so it was like I had an option to go to uh, several schools, like okay. several um, continuation mm -hmm. schools. But that one was new, and so I was just like, okay. Okay. I'm gonna try this one out. And, okay, and yeah. then and then that was it. Mm -hmm. And then your dad already lived up in Hammond. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so you had a place to live, mm -hmm. and then you just said, you know, let me try this school. Mm -hmm. Was it um was it hard in the beginning? Yeah, I didn't want to be there. Yeah, you mm -hmm. didn't. Yeah. I walked in there. I was like, whoa. No. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it start to like, take? Um, mm -hmm. I would say about two weeks. Okay. Yeah, it two was weeks? like That's not bad. because I still had that. You know that I'm gonna fight. That chip on your shoulder, right? That anger. So yeah. I couldn't let things go. So a girl looked at me, and I was like, "Well, come on now, like, right. what's right? up?" Right, exactly. Right. And so it was just bad because okay. it's just like there was a whole bunch of people there like me. So let me ask you this: mm -hmm. Here's where you can really bring a ton of value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, there's parents out there that are looking mm -hmm. right now, and they have kids that are struggling and, right. and might be doing what I did and what you did, mm -hmm. right? Um, what advice do you have for them? I, I would say don't give your kids attention when they the, when they're doing the bad thing. Okay, don't because, feed into it. Right, because that's what makes them do, do it again or okay. do it most. Yeah, because they're getting the attention. Right, and that was my and issue. Sometimes that's all they want is attention. That was my issue. Exactly. Exactly. So, I'm acting out mm -hmm. to get attention. Right. Okay, so don't give them the negative attention. Don't feed that negative. Right. Right, mm -hmm. and then. What can they do to actually start to turn that around and connect with? Because there, there's got to be a disconnect, mm -hmm. right, with their kid and them. Right. Um. I don't. I would say that don't try to control them. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. like, when a parent says, "Don't hang out with your friends," don't mm -hmm. do this, stay what are you inside, gonna do? they're yeah. gonna do the opposite. <laughs> exactly. And it's just gonna make it worse because okay. I'd say just be there for them. I love and it. just tell them that you're always going to be there for them, regardless right. of what, what you and do. And you can tell me anything. Right. Exactly. Right? And and mm -hmm. what I love about Isaiah 
and his sister's mm. um, story is right. their pa their parents do whatever they need to do to make sure that they're um, they're keeping their business going, they're keeping their grades right. going. So mm. the support mm. is just phenomenal. Mm. Um, that's why I want to have them on the show because it's such a team. Right. It's such mm -hmm. a team effort. So um, what else? Uh, anything else going on in your life? Nothing much. That's yeah. just. What do, you, what do you do for your downtime? What do you do when you're not in school? Work. <laughs> you do? Yeah? Yeah, do some homework and okay. yeah, okay. I'm really focused for now. Are you? Yeah. So so you said you're going to cheer when you get back into college? Mm -hmm. Yeah? For sure? Yes, for sure. You excited? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Now, do you want it, You ever have aspirations about uh, a pro team like uh, NFL or NBA you could cheer? I have, but like that's not really what I'm into. Okay. Yeah. You're looking more for a career, career. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And what made you pick this uh, career? Because that's pretty cool. I was just like, I was, I'm was. i really interested in like the science of okay. what happened. Like, not even the science. I'll say the psychology part of what happens, like of why. Okay. How because, we tick. Right. What makes us tick. Exactly. Because, and many people are like, I don't like when people call people sick in mm -hmm. the mind. Because I don't think people are sick in the mind. Again, I just think they're misunderstood. Okay. There's some people out there, yeah, but like not everybody. Right, right. That, the majority that, exactly. have to be understood, mm -hmm. right? And and it's interesting, right? Mm -hmm. I love uh, the mindset and right. how it works and mm -hmm. what makes us tick. Right. I'm a big, that's my biggest message is the mindset. And it's interesting that we both are so interested in that because we were both so misunderstood exactly, for so long. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I never even realized that <laughs> I would be considered a creative person, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, where I grew up, I'm thinking creative is just an artist or somebody right. that paints mm -hmm. or something like that or draws, right. mm -hmm. and I couldn't do that. And but um, and and then on top of it, acting out, getting in trouble, fighting for attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I right. love that. I love that. So. So um, that's going to be an awesome career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. So is there anything else um, that I didn't talk about that you want to mention, that you um, want to talk about, that you want to share? I'd say that later on in life, I want to um, find a way to fix the jail system. Oh. Because I feel like they're, it's just a revolving door. Okay. The jail systems, I feel like they, they're made for criminals to come in, mm -hmm. but to do what? When they come there's out. no rehab, there's no re right. rehabilitation exactly. or real rehabilitation. Right, and so when they come out, they have nothing to do but to come back in. Right, and that's kind of like how it is for high schoolers when they get expelled, mm -hmm. they go into an alternative school that does what to the kids, and so they can just never change. Right, you're right. never teaching them to get out of that environment. Mm -hmm. Right, and right. and that maps to the. What me and you love is the mm -hmm. mindset. Exactly. Because if you can't change that paradigm, mm -hmm. right, they're going to go right back to right. What, what they knew, right, right? and their own, um, their own level of mm -hmm. awareness. And, and it also maps to their self image. Mm -hmm. And that's why, right, you have athletes that, that work their way out, mm -hmm. unbelievable careers, but then fall right back in, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're broke, they're right, they're right there. Or, or the ones that got out. Change that paradigm shift, right? Mm -hmm. And figured out, okay, exactly. it's like I always said for years, if I was a pro athlete, mm -hmm. right, and 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 I all of a sudden I came into all this money and I signed an unbelievable contract, right. man. And now it's easy to say it from here, right? Mm -hmm. to, to be a Monday morning quarterback, but you, I would like I would want to just grab onto a guy like Magic Johnson mm -hmm. that he's. His business career is probably better than his NBA career, and that's unbelievable. Right. Like, what he's been able to do, right? right. And you can attach to people like that, that literally have been there. I, right. You know, we call that modeling. Mm -hmm. And you can model somebody that's been there mm -hmm. before you. Mm -hmm. Man, I mean, yeah. it's just, it's, it's really cool. Right. Really, really cool. So, um, that's a, that's another thing that I can see you doing, mm -hmm. is, is people modeling you, because... You've been there, you can speak their language, you've been there, mm -hmm. you understand it, mm -hmm. now you have much more tools to help right. them get out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. I love that. And I mm -hmm. think I think the career that you pick too is gonna really um because again, the one of the things that happens with, with us is um we need that mental stimulation. Right. Do you get bored quick? Yes. <laughs> Very quick, right? Mm -hmm. Me too. You right. get bored quick, mm -hmm. right? Do you need change? Do you, um, do you like um 
Do you um, like new things? Little changes, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Little things that you feel are more controlled. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. all right. Um, so anything else before we jump off that you want to share? Nothing else. I don't think so. No? Okay. Well, we got Stephanie Anderson. Awesome, awesome lady. Um, what a great... And, oh, here's the other thing. When we jump off, you're going to be able to jump back on, reconnect with everybody, right? right? Okay. And say hello and reconnect and, okay. and uh, answer anybody's questions that they have. Uh, we had a lot of great people on. Now, you're going to love this because it's all about the mindset. So we end the show the same way every time mm-hmm. because I believe that we can only be in one state of mind at a time. Right. So if you're in victim state, right? Mm-hmm. There's no room for gratitude. Right. Right. And if you're in that gratitude state at that moment, there's no room for victim mm-hmm. or poor me mm-hmm. or anything like that, right? And I always believe that even though me and you like to control things, mm-hmm. we don't. Um, uh, we can't control life. Life makes right. the rules, right? Mm-hmm. And life asks the questions. Right now, life is saying, Aaliyah, if you could, if you could live your life. In that unstoppable state, the majority of your day, how would that feel? Good. Pretty like, amazing. Right, yeah. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And the next question that life's asking you, Leah, hey, Leah, if you could live your life purring like a kitten or roaring like a lion, what would you do? I would roar like a lion. That a girl, I knew the answer. <laughs> so we're going to take this out, Monster mm-hmm. Motivator style. Mm-hmm. And the sound is just as important as the pose, mm-hmm. okay? And it goes like this ah, on mm-hmm. three. Ready? One. Two, three. Ah! <laughs> Girl, awesome job. Awesome job. Guys, thank you so much for jumping on. Thank you for taking the time, commenting. Aliyah's going to jump back on, reconnect with everybody when we share this. She's going to share it to her people. And once we put it on uh, YouTube, we're going to put the bumpers in. We'll let you know. And then that's your footage to do what you want. Awesome job, girl. Thank you. Love it. <laughs> Have a great